In this week's episode, I'm going to show you how I built this here log saw style chainsaw mill. Welcome back to Fabin Adventures, guys. Woo! It's been quite a long time since I've done a video, and I've been tinkering around with all kinds of different adventures and whatnot. And my latest one, I've gotten into uh, sawmilling, using a chainsaw and a, an Alaskan-style sawmill to mill up lumber and whatnot. And our plan is actually to build a little cabin out back, like a little 10 by 12 cabin in the back part of our land. And back there, we've got a great big blowdown, whole bunch of trees all down in a huge area. And I figured I, you know, the last few years that we've been living here, I thought I'd like to make use of that stuff. So that's the plan. We're going to turn that big blowdown into a little log cabin. So uh, <laughs> this here is a monster 105 cc chainsaw I got off Amazon. And the darn thing's pretty good. It's a clone of an old still 070 105 cc chainsaw. So this thing is a tank and it weighs a ton. I believe the saw, I'm not sure if it's the saw and bar or just the saw alone is 28 pounds. So this whole assembly here is probably 40 some pounds or whatever, and it's getting pretty heavy to put on the rails. So what I want to build is a stationary sawmill, kind of like a log assault. If you guys are at all familiar with the Logosol uh, chainsaw mill, it's basically a aluminum framed deal. I'm not sure how long they are, but the chainsaw stays on the rail all the time. And you bring the log up on and you can lift the log up independently on each side and roll it and cut your lumber out of it. So those things are pretty expensive and I like to build stuff. So I got a bunch of steel over there and we're gonna try and make a clone of a Logosol in steel it's not gonna be real super portable, but uh, I'm gonna make it so I can at least carry it to location, and kind of half assemble it and use it. So let's get after it. All right, so here we got a little bit of plans. And typically when I build stuff, I just wing it. But this is a little more involved and it's something I've never built before. So I drew up some real simple plans and I don't know how close I'm going to stay to them. Uh, probably the main frame will work out, but I'll probably end up doing modifications <laughs> during the project. And uh, we got a new tool in the shop here, an arc droid. It's a little CNC plasma cutter and a real pretty cool little machine for making brackets and little fittings and stuff. The cutting size of it isn't real big and I find it a little restrictive for uh, plasma cutting out DXF files off the internet for like little fire pits and I was starting to build a little fire pit here just to see what I can do but I had to reduce it to 75% of the size but we're gonna make use of this guy in building our sawmill and uh, hopefully it's gonna work You got to see the arc droid in action. <laughs> this thing is a time saver. I made uh, 16 or 17 of these little brackets. And uh, once, once I got it figured out what size to set the hole, it sets these quarter inch holes like nice and snug, just the way you want it. And uh, man, did that save a ton of time. If I had to cut all that by hand, each one of these little brackets, see if I can show you. There you go. Whips out a little bracket, 
pretty quick. I just got to bust the slag off, clean it up a little bit, and they're ready to go. So anyhow, so far, she's handy. I got a bunch more cutting to do on this project. Let's get back at her. All right, now we're getting somewhere here. We got the mill mainframe built, uh, temporarily squared up with this uh, spare steel that I've got. Got it squared every way so that it's perfectly square. And then we're gonna weld our tabs on that we made on the arc droid the other day and bolt in our permanent bracing. Uh, I've got the lifting bar here for the table here where the log stays on. So you can lift the log up to whatever height you need it. I still got to build a crank and a pulley system to lift all this stuff up and whatnot. There's quite a bit of work left to do, but it looks like it's going to be a pretty sweet little mill. Let's keep at her. That's my kind of CAD <laughs> to go from a drawing to making the part. We're going to take it. We're going to put it in the little uh, break that I have. We'll break these corners over and it'll be what's used to hold the top rail on the sawmill. That thing is proving to be right handy. Thanks, Arctroid. All right, the moment of truth. Now we'll see if my plate mounting system is gonna work. Got a couple of these standoffs. Those should get just screwed on. In place of the nuts. This don't have to be super tight or nothing to see if it's going to work. There she is. I think that's going to work. Woo! I got a ton of hours into figuring all this out and I still got lots more to do. Uh, this may get to be a long video or even a two part video, but stay tuned. We're going to be trying this baby out in a week or so. So I think I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to make a new plate slide plate here. And instead of these, these uh, UHMW glides being bolted in from the side, I'll bolt them in from the top. That way I can make this plate come all the way out here and I can make some sort of a standoff for here if I need. And for my crank, my winch crank and whatnot. So <clears throat> we're gonna have to R&D a new plate, but no big deal. We got the Arc Droid and that baby will make short work of it. 
All right, we got the new slide built and it works real nice. It's a bit stiff yet. And now we're working on the crank to uh, lift and lower the logs and just cut these little tabs and stuff out on the arc droid. That thing is super handy. And we're just gonna clamp it on here and tack weld the tabs, make sure the crank works good and then uh, carry on. This is exactly what I got the arc droid for, for CAD, cardboard aided design. And yeah, you just make this little devil and we're gonna put it in here and we're gonna trace, use the trace feature, use the trace feature and see how it works. Get the lead cuts right. That looks right. We'll save it, 42. We got the crank here just about done. It's gonna get mounted under here and it's gonna be when you're cutting along you're cranking this and it's what pulls the whole carriage along. And uh, it's way more precision than it needs to be but it was kind of fun trying to do it see if I could make it precision like that. And the cool thing <laughs> that actually was tricky to do, not really tricky but you just had to be careful, was to get these ears perfectly dead on aligned, not out. Because if they are outside, your pin would never line up with these bushings that I made. <clears throat> Basically, it's gonna go together like this. The pin will go in. The hole I drilled in there will stick the rope through there. And that's what'll hold the whole assembly together is that rope. 
and it'll be simple to take this out and change it if you need it. You just pull the rope out, that shaft will come out, the spool will come out, and that'll all stay mounted to the carriage. Pretty cool. I may as well pat myself on the back for making that precision. All right, what I'm setting up here uh, is a slot for a locking mechanism for when the log sits on it. This here is the lifting arm. It's what lifts the log up. And I'm making a slot in there to make a sliding lock to be able to lock the log on the table. And uh, Arcdroid's gonna make it a heck of a lot easier. All the parts I've been making for this project would have been super tough to do by hand. I mean, I could have did it. In the past, I did it all with side grinders or even setting up straight edges and plasma cutting by hand. But man, this thing makes it super precision and repeatable. Like if I need to make a bunch of cuts, I just make, save it in there and I just keep on cutting. Or if I make a mistake, I can edit it in there and re-cut a bigger hole or whatever. So let's cut this bad boy and see how she goes. Okay, this is how my plan is for the lock to work. This was my test piece to make sure my idea was gonna work. I have this little slotted piece. It's gonna go in there. And then when you put tension on it, it locks, right? And I'll be mounting this little cam lock to it somehow. That way when you got your log on this thing here, you slide this up to it and you lift the cam up to it and it should push against the log, push against this, and hopefully it won't slide and it's as easy as turning and taking it out. We'll see how it works. But in theory, she should work. All right, so I've been working on a way to lock this bar every half inch. I'd like it every quarter and I can, I'll have to put a lock on this side, but I just got this old gate latch that I took apart here and I plasmaed in all these notches. So now when you crank it up to lift the log up, it should click in every half inch, bring the log up half an inch, back it off and it should lock and stop. And it looks like this idea is gonna work just friggin' great. So now all I have to do is offset the notches on this side, a quarter of an inch from these, and then it'll go click, 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 side to side. And then I just need to make a release lever or something that will release this. You just crank it up a little bit, release that, and then you'll be able to back it right back down to zero. The last night when I was working on this latch locking system. I was just using some old latch that I had in my parts bin and I took this part out and I rigged it up as you've seen on the pictures and I went to town to try and find another one of these. Thought I could get one at home hardware or something. Couldn't find them anywhere. Went to my local welding shop, found these. Super. Uh, it's going to be a major time saver. Now all I got to do is bolt it up and crank it and it's going to work. Before I was gonna have to figure out how to make this shroud, make a dust shield and all that so dust doesn't get in there and cause any trouble. Now it's gonna work. Check this out. All I gotta do is think of a way to hold these open for when you wanna back it back down because I'm still thinking I'm gonna put two in there and go every quarter of an inch. I'm gonna cut these on the arc droid, staggered every quarter inch, and it'll be perfect. I think all I need to do is make some sort of a, a little thing where you pull it back and a little latch goes over top or something like that. It'll be something simple. Then you just undo these and you can back her down. It's gonna work awesome. Arc droid here is pretty handy. Now that I have most of my files for this set up, that one that's that uh, lift arm that's in the mill already is a uh, is just a test piece so i have it saved i just have to go into load it's probably this one yeah 
which I haven't called it, lock slots, lift arm lock slots. So let's name it then. There we go. Now when we want to load it, lift arm, lift tube lock slots, we just click on it, brings it right up. Let's make sure we didn't load two of them. Erase it completely. Exit. Load, lift tube lock slots, load it, and there it is. Now all we have to do is zero it and we're good to go. To zero it, we're going to use the corner wizard We're going to click it into my plasma. Bring it down to the corner of the part. Make sure she's solid and zeroed. And then just press zero on the screen. Now it's zeroed. And now we can do a test run just to make sure without the torch on. And it should drop down and basically start our cuts. Tell you what, this doing these slots would be super tedious and a pain in the butt, and they would not even be close to accurate uh, without the ArcDroid. So this here tool has been a game changer in my shop for sure. It's, it's made fabricating stuff so much easier and handier and whatnot. So let's press stop, lift the arm up, and we'll be ready to cut this, flip it, stagger the whole bar a quarter of an inch over, press cut again, and it'll cut everything, and the holes will be staggered on either side a quarter of an inch. And... Uh, we should be good to go. So I got this channel iron clamped in place and that is to make sure that these slots get perfectly uh, equal down this rail side to side. Make <clears throat> It's basically making sure that this rail is square to the machine itself and uh, it'll make sure our slots are perfect. So let's go ahead and cut. Look at how handy that is. Perfect. There we go. I think I got her figured out here. I just have to bolt these down but I got all the slots all chamfered out nice. And now we should go every quarter inch. Then you just back it off and it'll hold. It'll hold all of my weight, no problem. So I'm sure it'll hold double that. The nose is sticking in about a sixteenth of an inch, so it's got probably about a, a quarter inch of grab. Should be good. I think I'm going to go ahead and bolt these down where they need to be. Do the other side. Weld on the top rail, try out my locks, figure out my locks, and I should be able to throw a log on here and try it. Try and do a cut on a log and see how it works. All right, we get the moment of truth here. Got it outside, got it leveled up, and uh, just gonna see how cranking it up goes.
<laughs> oh, is that the ticket? <laughs> Let's trail these log locks. It looks like it's going to work. All right, so what I'm doing here now is I took one of these turnbuckles and I cut it on the saw and I installed them down in here and they're going to slip right inside of this square tubing on either side and it'll be like one big turnbuckle. And it's what I'll use to take the crown out of here, whether it's raised or lowered. I'll be able to turn each one of these in or out and get this crown, get this table dead flat. Then we'll put a washer under this side. Just to give it a little height, put a washer under this side. All right, now you can see this washer passes underneath, no problem. We'll give her a few cranks. It's just starting to disturb the line there. Back it off one, there she is, level. All right, we're finally approaching the last bits of the build here. We're just gonna build these four foot wings. They're gonna go on each side and they'll be braced up. They'll have a couple of pins for alignment and probably some of these adjusters to be able to get everything dead flat. And uh, what I've done basically is laid my 3 16 by 6 plate down on top of this bed, put the channel iron and took the micrometer and made sure it's evenly spaced within 10, 15 thou. That's plenty accurate. And clamped her down, made sure everything is square and I'm just going to weld her up and I'll set this one up, weld it up and then I'll work on figuring out how I'm going to mount this stuff. Man, have I mentioned how handy this thing is? So crazy how fast you can make parts once you catch on to it. Especially when you gotta make multiple parts like this. Super handy. It saved me a ton of time and when it's set upright, there's very little dross to clean up. You know, there's pretty well nothing. There's two little spots there where it went across the ribs and that's it. So handy, so quick to make parts, so quick cleanup. I just got to touch them up, just a touch on the, on the belt grinder, they fit right in there, it's awesome. Here's a little plasma cutting tip I want to show you. If you set your parts up to cut too close together and you cut this piece out, now you have this open rectangle in here, plasma cutter comes in here, cuts this piece out, it's going to glance. Uh, for a better word, it's going to glance your arc and it's going to create a bevel cut. Now I don't know if the camera is going to focus on that, but it's got a bevel cut. This one here, 
nice and straight. It's common knowledge if you do lots of plasma cutting, and I don't really care because these are just mounting brackets. It's nothing critical. But in case it is critical, make sure you give yourself enough space. Set your stuff up to be a quarter inch apart or something like that. Don't be a steel miser and your cuts will be nice and straight. There's your tip for the day. Now here's a great reason to have a downdraft table for your plasma table when you want to grind off rust and whatnot. You can just grind this dusty junk off and it just gets sucked down into the filters. Alright, let's try and get this darn sawmill done, at least to the point of being able to use it and seeing if there's anything I need to change, which I've already made a few changes. Uh, I've got this wing on here, leveled, squared left to right. I've built these brackets here, they're just tacked in and they're bolted, drilled and tapped and bolted. And that's what will hold this together. And here is just basically a lineup pin system I made. So basically, this side will get attached to this wing, this side will get attached to the main frame, and when you put it together, they'll just slide together, and it'll hold this right where it needs to be. There should be less lineup. There might be some minor, minor lineup that you need to do, but it'll at least hold it in place. When you shove this on, you can bring this brace down here, bring it up, put the bolt in, and you should be pretty well done, except for minor, minor leveling. So, just a simple little lineup bracket. Should work okay. Now the last thing we got to do is just level our saw bar and we should be good. So the saw slide is made just of 3 16 plate. This here is one inch square tubing. Got her painted up nice with some kind of a copper tinted hammer tone type paint. 
these down here are just some UHMW blocks that I got off of Amazon and I milled the slot in my mill, cut them down to size and I had lots of trouble getting this to slide nice. It was real stiff when I was building it and I had a heck of a time when I milled these blocks, it made the blocks banana and I thought I could run a full 12 inch block here, but it just caused too much, uh, too much tension in there and it was just too hard to slide. So I took the section out here and uh, that made it way easier to slide. Built the crank down here, the winch crank that, that pulls the saw. The blade stabilizer here so I can put in my auxiliary oiler up top there. Works great. This here uh, log lifting system, it kept me up at night <laughs> quite a bit thinking on how I was gonna make it go with quarter inch stops and to lock in spot every quarter of an inch it lifts the log up so you can make your dimensional lumber in quarters inch and a half inch and three quarters two inch whatever six by six beams and i mean it works pretty pretty simple and i use the arc droid to put these slots here in the side and then i just had to bevel them with a dremel type tool just so that it wouldn't bind going up and now it it's pretty smooth. <laughs> and then, as you can see down in here, we got three homemade aluminum pulleys on a 3 8 steel shaft. There's an aluminum pulley here. There's another aluminum pulley on the other side. And that's what makes it so you can lift uh, the logs actually really easily. I put a pretty heavy log on it and it lifts it easy. You just have to pin that side when you want to drop it. And then you manually hold here and you can drop this arm wherever you want. This kept me up. This kept me thinking, boy, at night, how I was gonna make this work. And so far, it seems to work really good. And the arc droid, man, that thing has been super, super handy with all the little tabs and cutting them slots out and little brackets here and there and, uh, I don't know if I would have been able to do it without that arc droid. Handy, handy little tool. If you look down low here, I've got these funny looking plates and it's just so you can hand level the system. You can level each corner individually. That way you can take any twist out of the top plate and uh, it works pretty good. It's a little crude, but it does work pretty darn good. Each one of these braces that you can see, there's one at the far end here, here, and one behind me, and they're like a massive turnbuckle. You can turn them in and out to lift or lower to take any sag out of the table and to get the far end wings level. You just run a string line across and you just turn them and everything until you get her dead flat. Worked out pretty good. I just took some turnbuckles that I got off Amazon, cut them, welded them inside of here. <laughs> Super simple, but it works. Also, if you didn't notice before, I've got this stick-on tape measure type stuff and I put it on the rail there so that you can quickly look side to side and see as long as you're, make sure you're even or if your log is three inches bigger on one side than the other, you can stagger each arm an inch and a half. Overall, it was a pretty fun project to build. Uh, I mean, I got a lot of time into it. If you counted your time as dollars, it would have been just easier to go and spend a 3,500 or four grand or whatever these things are to buy them. But I like to build stuff. That's what the channel's about. We're fabricating and we're having adventures and we're having fun. Thanks for watching guys. See you on the next one.